amazing progress and so fast. Just days ago, prototypes S31 and B13 stood on the launch pad. Now they rest beneath the ocean after completing another crucial test. The big question, what's their current status? Thankfully, Elon Musk and key sources have just shared updates. In today's episode, we'll explore these insights, the latest Starship Lunar Mission Agreement, and NASA's exciting proposal for a future lunar crew rescue mission. Let's dive into all of it on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Starship has lifted off for the fourth time this year, a milestone that underscores significant progress compared to the previous year. This flight marked the third instance where both stages executed return maneuvers, bringing SpaceX closer to achieving full reusability. However, Flight 6 introduced unexpected developments, particularly involving Booster 13, or B-13 for short. During the mission, B-13 abandoned its planned attempt to land on the Mechazilla arm, and instead performed a controlled descent into the Gulf of Mexico. In SpaceX's livestream, the booster was shown firing its engines for a precise vertical landing, gracefully touching down in the water. However, shortly after landing, B-13 exploded as captured in subsequent video footage. Ship 31, or S-31, meanwhile, followed a similar trajectory to its predecessor, landing vertically in the Indian Ocean. Unlike previous flights, this landing showcased only minor fires during the livestream, highlighting significant improvements in the ship's overall design and performance. With these developments, attention has turned to the status of the Flight 6 stages. B-13's post-landing explosion has sparked widespread speculation. Imagery suggests that while the upper portion of the booster was severely damaged, the lower section appeared relatively intact and was seen floating briefly before submerging. The cause of the explosion remains a topic of debate. While some suggest the flight termination system may have been activated, the controlled nature of the descent implies that SpaceX likely intended to recover the booster intact for analysis rather than destroy it. The pre-designated landing zone further supports this theory as there would have been no immediate need for self-destruction. Instead, the explosion might have been caused by structural damage during the water landing. The impact could have compromised the fuel tank, triggering a rupture and subsequent explosion. Despite the damage, the intact sections of B-13, particularly its engine systems, could still be of significant value for research and analysis. SpaceX may deploy recovery vessels to retrieve these parts, much as they did with Booster 11. Prompt recovery efforts will be essential to minimize the effects of prolonged seawater exposure. While visual updates on S-31's condition remain scarce, Musk offered some insight via X. He revealed, well, the fairing did blow up when the ship fell over after landing in the water, as expected. This statement confirms that despite a seemingly smooth landing, S-31 also experienced an explosion. The destruction of the fairing likely resulted from water impact rather than deliberate FTS activation. This implies that the payload humorously referred to as Mr. Banana likely met the same fate. The condition of S-31's lower section remains unclear, and its recovery is further complicated by its considerable distance from Starbase. However, the possibility of salvaging components for future use remains a hopeful prospect. Flight 6 appears to have left the launch infrastructure in relatively good condition. The only notable issue reported was a misalignment in the communication system atop the launch tower. This system, vital for future landing attempts, is already undergoing repairs. Images from Starbase show workers actively addressing the issue to ensure its readiness for the next mission. The Megazilla arm catch remains a critical goal for SpaceX, particularly as the company looks ahead to catching Starship stages during upcoming flights. Perfecting this capability will be essential for achieving full reusability and supporting more ambitious missions. Fortunately, other key systems, including the orbital launch mount, water deluge, chopsticks, and quick disconnect systems, appear to have emerged unscathed. This resilience positions SpaceX well to prepare the pad for future launches with minimal downtime. SpaceX is already making strides toward the next mission. Booster 14 has begun integration with the launch pad in preparation for static fire tests, while Ship 33 is undergoing engine installation at Massey for its own static fire sequence. 
These developments signal SpaceX's readiness to press forward with its ambitious flight schedule. If you're excited as we are to see what's next, reply, let's return in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's extraordinary journey of innovation and exploration. The recent Starship flights have undoubtedly showcased its immense potential, setting the stage for new and ambitious lunar missions. In a significant development just two days after Flight 6, SpaceX's Starship was selected by Lunar Outpost to deliver their rover to the moon. This collaboration was formalized on November 21st with a contract between SpaceX and Lunar Outpost. While specific details and timelines were not disclosed, the announcement highlights the growing confidence in Starship's capabilities. Lunar Outpost is one of three companies alongside Intuitive Machines and Venturi Astrolab, chosen by NASA for Phase 1 of the Lunar Terrain Vehicle Program earlier this year. The program, part of NASA's Artemis Initiative, aims to develop rovers capable of supporting lunar exploration missions. These rovers will play a crucial role in transporting astronauts, cargo, and scientific instruments across the moon's surface. Under Phase 1, the selected companies have one year to design and unveil their rover concepts, with a deadline in April of next year. NASA will then evaluate the proposals and choose at least one company to proceed with building their rover. The evaluation and selection process will culminate six months later, marking the end of Phase 1. Once the rovers are operational, these companies will have dual roles, supporting NASA's Artemis missions and potentially utilizing the vehicles for their own commercial purposes. Explaining their decision to partner with SpaceX, Lunar Outpost CEO Justin Cyrus expressed high confidence in Starship, stating, The reason we chose Starship is their technological maturation, the pace at which they move, and the quality of that organization. It's a vehicle that we think will be able to provide reliable landing on the lunar surface, and we know that they can get it done on the timelines we need. While the competition among the three companies is expected to be intense, given NASA's limited budget and intent to select only one rover, Lunar Outpost appears committed to its partnership with SpaceX regardless of the outcome. Cyrus added, no matter what, we're going to be flying this vehicle on Starship. This determination reflects the growing recognition of Starship's unmatched potential. As this revolutionary rocket continues to progress, it's easy to envision a future where Starship dominates lunar transportation, shaping humanity's presence across the moon's vast surface. Meanwhile, NASA has proposed a crucial new crew rescue system for future lunar missions, particularly those conducted in the challenging environment of the moon's south pole. Known as the South Pole Safety System, part of the broader Lunar Rescue System Initiative, this system aims to address emergencies during crewed missions and ensure the safe return of incapacitated astronauts during extravehicular activities. The proposed system must meet rigorous demands. It should be compact, lightweight, and advanced, while also being immediately deployable in emergencies. Additionally, the system must function independently of lunar rovers, as rovers may not always be available during a crisis. NASA emphasized the importance of the system, this system, in a statement, If an astronaut crew member becomes incapacitated during a mission, the ability to return them safely and promptly to the human landing system is essential. The challenges of the lunar south pole environment make such a system indispensable. Astronauts will contend with rugged terrain featuring rocks, craters, and fissures, compounded by the moon's low gravity, extreme temperatures, and the south pole's persistent lack of sunlight. These factors necessitate a rescue system capable of swift and reliable performance. NASA's vision for the system is impressive. It envisions astronauts being able to transport incapacitated astronauts, incapacitated colleagues, weighing up to 343 kilograms across a distance of 2 kilometers, even on slope slopes of up to 20 degrees without the aid of a rover. To encourage innovative solutions, NASA is inviting ideas from the public with a submission deadline of January 23rd of 2025 and a total prize pool of $45,000 US, 
the agency concluded, by addressing this challenge, you have the opportunity to contribute to the next giant leap in human space exploration. This initiative represents a vital step in enhancing astronaut safety during Artemis missions. Given its importance, organizations like SpaceX may play a pivotal role in contributing innovative designs to make lunar exploration safer and more sustainable. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.